The Monerotopia guest segment is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. Lixon. Hey. Hey. Hello, Douglas. How's it going, man? Thanks for jumping on. Good, good, good. Good, good. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, I just learned of you guys recently. I actually don't didn't really know much about Keystone. Uh, mm-hmm. but I saw the saw the chatter on X about Keystone being interested potentially in adding Monero to their hardware wallet. Yes, yes. Actually, I think Monero is the number one blockchain or number one cryptocurrency that we were asked by our users to add into Keystone. Uh, but the problem was that uh, uh, I'm not seeing any bad words from Monero, but the problem compare Monero to Bitcoin is that uh, Monero software wallet developers are not that active. For example, right now, mm. my Monero is not actively maintained their software wallet. And for Keystone, one of the biggest difference between Keystone and other hardware wallets is that we position Keystone as a pure signer which means that we integrate it with Keystone. We doesn't want to push our user to use Keystone software wallet as the companion application, but we position Keystone as a keyner, as a signer. So once you have this device, you can use whatever software wallet you want to use. Um, so this is the, the difference of Keystone. So this means that we have to integrate Keystone with one of those Monero software wallet to support Monero. But actually, mm-hmm. we've been pitching Monero wallet for over two, I think, and a half years. Uh, but finally, I think we got Cake Wallet, and I'm super happy to see Cake Wallet is Monero Topia's sponsor. So yeah, I think uh, things are coming closer, and we're going to have a meeting with Tux. Tux, I think Tux from Cake Wallet team. We're going to have a mm-hmm. meeting with Cake Wallet team, and we are so actively supporting. Uh, Monero, uh, so that we're going to contribute code to Cake Wallet. And thank God, uh, it's open source. We love open source. And our firmware is also open source. So we will contribute code to Cake Wallet to get Keystone integrated for Monero. And if the feedback from the users are really good, maybe we'll also add Bitcoin and I think also other like Litecoin support for Cake Wallet. Yeah, that's our plan. Oh, amazing. Okay. so. So through through with the integration with the Cake Wallet software, you'll be able to cr- effectively create a Monero hardware wallet on Keystone. Yes, yes, uh, and also I know that uh, Monero's uh, recovery phase is a little bit different from like normal recovery phase, which is BIP mm-hmm. thirty nine recovery phase. Uh, you guys have the twenty five word recovery phase, and also you have policy. If I remember correctly, which is mm-hmm. 16 words. And uh, Ledger doesn't support, Ledger doesn't natively support those recovery phase. And uh, we will fix all those problems to give the best experience to the Monero community. Mm-hmm. So l- l- let's back up for a second. So obviously very excited that potentially yeah. we have uh, another uh, or a true Monero hardware wallet coming online, right? Because right now, I think the only solution for hardware wallets for Monero is Ledger. Is that is that correct? Tux, right? Or uh, Lixin, if you know, like, is that Ledger really and Trezor? And so h- how do those implementations differ or compare to what we might see with Keystone? And and from the standpoint of the end user is the, you know, how, 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 wh- why Keystone? Okay. Why not using Ledger or Trezor to, to store your Monero? Um, I think uh, if you compare, uh, let's compare Keystone with Ledger, uh, because I think Ledger is more widely used right now. Uh, I think the first difference um, from feature wise, uh, the first difference, just like I mentioned, we will support, uh, we will natively support Monero recovery phase, including policy. I think this is a huge difference compared to Ledger, which is okay. which we stick to the standard of Monero uh, community. And also from the device wise, uh, you can see, I'm not sure if you can see the, the device. This is our device. 
And uh, the from form factor wise, the biggest difference of this device and uh, also I have a ledger from form factor wise, you can see uh, the size of the device are totally different. Um, mm. The Keystone hardware where it comes with a four inch touch screen mm -hmm. because we do this because we believe that user experience is part of the security. If we build something that's hard to use, uh, people may abandon this hardware wallet and go back to pure software wallet to have some compromise on the security side. And also it's possible that some people made human mistake when they're using a hardware wallet if it's hard to use. So we see user, user experience is part of the security. That's why we have this four inch touch screen so that the, the UX is as close as possible to your mobile phone. So this is one of the biggest difference. And also the, the second big difference is that you can, I'm not sure you can see on the back of the device, we have mm -hmm. a camera. Hmm. Camera means that we use QR code. We use QR code as the data transmission between software wallet and hardware wallet. Uh, if you have ever used the ledger uh, before, uh, maybe not only Cake Wallet, but, as, but also other software wallet, if you use ledger, use Ledger Nano X to do the Bluetooth connection to your software wallet, usually it's unsteady and uh, the, the UX is very bad. But for our device, we use QR code. By the way, the QR code is fully open source. So you can verify what is getting to your hardware wallet and what is getting out of your hardware wallet. Uh, transparency brings trust. So we do this with QR code, uh, which is more transparent and, so, and also fully air-gapped user experience. You know everything getting to your hardware wallet and getting out of your hardware wallet. And also on the back of the device, another Another UX improvement is that we have a fingerprinting sensor. So you can authenticate your transaction with your fingerprint. Um, yeah, so a lot of this kind of improvement compared to Ledger. Um, by the way, uh, for Keystone, we also support three recovery phrase in one device. So it mm -hmm. means that you can import three recovery phrase and you can access those different recovery phrase with different pin code. This means that you can hold a policy of Monero in this hardware wallet. At the same time, you can also have a BIP39 recovery phrase for your Bitcoin. So that's the things. So we did a lot of these kind of improvements, not only for the security side, but also for the UX side. So mm -hmm. these are the, some of the key differences compared to Keystone and Ledger. Right. So as, if there's like a, a spectrum, you got, you have the traditional hardware wallets and then you have people using their, their yeah. smart, they're running a, an app like cake wallet on their smartphone. You guys are kind of inching over towards that side of the spectrum in that you're, you want to be usable in addition to just being uh, a reliable way yeah. to store your crypto. Uh, that's, yeah. that's so do, do, so do you envision people kind of using these devices on a daily basis then um, instead of as an additional device to their to their smartphone or using these just for large transaction like they, they they keep their store their wealth on there and then make some large transactions every now and then and move it to you know move it to your smartphone wallet where you then use it on a daily basis how, how do you envision it being used I think that really depends um just like our like fiat world in a fiat mm -hmm. world you have several accounts right you have your credit card account you have your bank account um for example you have some electronic payment like wise or you have your paypal account and all those accounts they serve different kind of purposes right you you go to a meal you use your credit card you shopping online you use like other payment gateways so those different payment methods or different uh, accounts serve different purposes from our perspective so keystone we serve the purposes that they want to long-term store some of their cryptocurrency or some large amount of cryptocurrency or they want to use keystone even even higher than that they want to use keystone as part of the multi-sig that's the mm -hmm. things or that's the scenario that we're we're envisioning or where you're arranging for the users how to use Keystone hardware wallet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, somebody had asked me a question. 
you know, is 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 Keystone truly open source? I know you said it was, but then I guess there was some some drama in the past or people talking about. I'm I'm not technical enough to understand this, but I'm sure you'll you'll know what I'm referring to. Binary blobs. That the last version oh, of Keystone right. used binary blobs. You, 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 welcome to the Monero community, my friend. You you will be asked the, the tough <laughs> yeah. questions. Um, so if yeah, you could yeah, get into I that a that. little bit, yeah, if you could explain that yeah. one a little bit, and maybe Tux can uh, knows what, what you're talking about here. Go ahead. Yeah, I think I'm not the the perfect guy to to answer this question. Uh, maybe our CTO is the best guy. Uh, but from my perspective, I can share some of the information about the open source of Keystone hardware wallet. Um, so we know that Ledger is closed to source. Uh, Ledger is closed to source because they claim that they are using secure element because that secure element has some proprietary code. So they, ha they cannot open source that code. And a lot of sensitive, uh, sensitive, for example, cryptographic algorithm, those kind of stuff, those kind of stuff are in the secure element uh, code, which is the most sensitive part of the hardware wallet. So for us, Keystone, uh, for open source, we want to find a balance between uh, fully open source, but without any secure element, just like Trezor, and uh, have has a secure element, but close the source. We want to find a balance. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. not sure if you heard of the heard of, heard of a hardware wallet called Code Card. Uh, it is a Bitcoin only hardware wallet. And they opened the era that they just use secure element to store the recovery phase. And when they use the recovery phase or use the private key to do some cryptographic uh, algorithm or cri cri cryptographic algorithm, they load the private key from the secure element into the MCU. MCU is like the CPU of the device, which mm -hmm. can be open source, uh, which the firmware of the CPU, the firmware of the MCU can be open source. So Keystone took that route, uh, but Keystone makes things one more step, which is uh, Keystone has three different types of secure element to store your coverage phrase, which means that the hacker needs to break all of them to get your coverage phrase. So we build up the um, the, the, the cost of the attack the device way higher than Ledger, which only have one secure element and a closed source secure element. So that's the key difference here. And also we open source every line of the code we wrote. Yeah, this is the... Okay, I think we have a question here. Uh, yep. Does it use EL5 plus hardware certified secure microprocessor? Um, microprocessor? We have three uh, secure elements, and uh, two of them are from Maxim, and the other, I don't remember the other vendor, but all of them are uh, Western vendors. And uh, they don't, they didn't take uh, the standard of EAL like five or EAL six. They take the standard of PCI standard. So they're using a different standard of secure element. Yeah, these are the secure elements we're using. A uh, microchip, mm -hmm. two, one microchip secure element, and uh, two from Maxim. Awesome, man! Uh, great that that you're answering yep. the, these these questions. Extremely excited that you're 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 working on this effort. And like you said, it's really because you're. I guess you were getting a lot of pressure from users. People were requesting for you to add Monero for quite some time. Yeah, for quite some time. How and, long is uh, to be how honest? Is... One... Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, and also one thing I want to mention that uh, Monero is one of the most difficult blockchain to develop on the cryptographic side because mm -hmm. you have uh, ring signature and other stuff that we need to develop. And most of our uh, code, uh, especially for cryptographic, we, we write that code in Rust. And I'm not sure. We also contribute to Bitcoin Rust too. So uh, that's a not all the cryptograph, not all the blockchains, they have libraries for Rust. So we build that from scratch and we also contribute to the libraries of the each ecosystem. So that usually takes a longer time. When do you envision this actually getting added to Keystone? Uh, I think maybe within the next two or three months, three months oh, at wow. most. 
Okay. Yeah. And the mm-hmm. fact that because Monero's we put getting... that at the the top priority right now, we put that at top priority right now. Oh wow, fantastic! And the fact that mm-hmm. uh, Monero is getting a major upgrade within like the next year, year and a half, with going to full chain membership proofs and deprecating ring signatures yep. and whatnot. Um, I guess uh, there'd be a path forward for easily uh, yeah. evolving from there. Yeah, for us, if we support one blockchain, it usually means that we support that thoroughly. So mm-hmm. we follow the half forks. For example, recently we are following the half forks, the half fork of Cardano uh, to fully support new features being brought by those half forks. Yeah, if we do Monero, it means that once Monero got new upgrades, and by the way, another big di- difference compared Keystone to Ledger is that uh, Ledger usually follow those uh, hard forks or those uh, upgrades through their third party developers. But mm-hmm. we develop those stuff in house. And you know that those third party development, they're always not up to date. But for us, we do all those stuff in house. So that's also one of the key difference. And we do that to try to make sure that we follow all the upgrades to make sure that we, we give you guys the most up to up to date UX for using hardware wallet. Very cool, man. How how big is the team? Uh right now we have about forty people right now. And oh, wow. over half of them are developers. Amazing. And when did you guys start? Like I said, I, I don't really oh. know much about Keystone. How, how long that's has a, Keystone been around? That's a, that's a long story. So actually, we're okay. not a new company. Uh, we started at the end of 2017 and early 2018. Mm-hmm. And the, right now, this device is also not our first generation. This is our third generation. And we've been around for six years. So we developed almost like two years for one generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the very first two years, we developed the first generation uh, because we're in China and we are incubated by one of the biggest miners here in China. So oh, for the very okay. first generation, we will build that device for the miners here in China. And uh, uh, that's also where we come up, we come up with the idea that using QR code because I interviewed a lot of miners here in China. Those huge miners, uh, they have thousands of tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin. And then I one of the key questions I asked them was that uh, when you're using hardware wallet, what's the most anxious time of using hardware wallet? They told me that uh, when they type their recovery phrase into the hardware wallet, it's they're super anxious. And the second most anxious time was that they plug in their hardware wallet into their laptop. So they don't know what's what's going on with the USB and also ledgers closed source. That's why we have the idea of using QR code, open source QR code, open protocol, open QR mm-hmm. code protocol, and also open source the firmware. Um, and also for those miners, because they work in the most isolated places in China for mm-hmm. the cheapest the electricity, uh, they also ask for for they also ask us to build the product like waterproof, drop resistant, this kind of thing. So for the very first generation, we didn't produce too much devices, but we set up the set up the like the tone of the company and the tone of the team is that we only build for the hardcore people. That's the first generation. And the first generation was too expensive for uh, for other people. Uh, we were selling around $400 for each device for the first generation. So for the second generation, we wanted to serve a wider amount of people. And uh, uh, me and our CTO, we were very into Bitcoin. Uh, you can call us Bitcoin maximalist at that time. Okay. So for the second generation, we built that uh, under $200. And then we were selling that device mostly to the Bitcoiners uh, in the United States and in Europe. Okay. Um, that's the second generation. And uh, also for that generation, we integrated with almost all the software wallet in the Bitcoin community. Mm-hmm. And also we brought QR signing, air gap QR signing into Bitcoin community. Um, and by the way, our CTO, Aaron, he's one of the co-authors of BIP 129, which is the Bitcoin improvement proposal for Bitcoin multi-sig. And for Keystone at that time, we did multi-sig very well because for Ledger and even for Trezor at that time, you cannot clearly see 
what you are signing for a multi-sig transaction because mm -hmm. multi-sig transaction is more complicated than a um, transaction for for a single private key, which means that you need actual work to display the information about the multi-sig on your hardware wallet. And the Keystone was the best solution at the time together with code card. So that's how we got into Bitcoin community. And uh, uh, then the third generation. For the third generation, we started to get out of Bitcoin community uh, to explore other blockchains like Ethereum, uh, Cardano, Cosmos, and right now Monero. So that's mm -hmm. basically our story. So we're not a new company, but we were in the first two years, we were targeting the Bitcoin miners here, super like extreme miners and the paranoid. And the second generation, another two years, we were targeting the Bitcoin maximalist in the United States. So four years gone. And the, the last two years, we've been, uh, for the last two years, most of the time we were working on Ethereum and other EVM blockchains and then Cosmos Cardano. So maybe, I know Monero guys, you, you also see Ethereum and other blockchains like Shitcoin. So you didn't watch too much what's happening there, but we've been there for quite some time. So wait, which coin? So it's it's Cardano. Which which are all the coins that are on Keystone? Uh, all, the, all the chains. By the way, we have it. Yeah, all the chains: Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all the other EVM chains, including like Polygon, Arbitrum, uh, and also we have Cosmos. Uh, we have uh, we have Cosmos. We have Cardano. We have LTC. Uh, yeah, I think those are mm. the other blockchains okay. we support. Okay. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. Can you, can, do you have any insight into Monero in, in China? Um, uh, I, Monero in China. Yeah. So, like, uh, like you, know, you say you have, you, you have people reaching out to you to buy these devices. I mean, I assume, so most of your sales are in the U S you're not, you're not really catering. Yeah. yeah. To the... six, 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 60%, 60% in the U S and the 30% in the Europe. Okay. Actually, we only have like three to 5% in China. Because really? Okay. Chinese well, that's there, interesting because like, you said init yeah. initially you had built it for the miners there, right? To use yeah, as a... Chinese miners. Yeah, okay, but those those are only a small group of people. Right. That's okay. a very small group of people. Yeah. Okay. So you were asking about Monero here in China. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to be honest, yeah, there are very very few people here in China. They're talking about Monero and spreading uh, the technology and the, mm -hmm. the most. Uh, like recent news about Monero, because you know, in China, the politics is kind of against anything related to core privacy tools. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah. that's the, yeah. No, that's, that's why I'm asking. It's, yeah. Yeah, but, but the thing is, one of our investors, who's also the CEO of the number one auditing company, uh, code auditing company for cryptocurrency, here mm -hmm. in China, and he's a huge fan of Monero, and he's like always pushing me support Monero on Keystone. Okay, what yeah. you know, not to put you on the spot, but kind of what 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 is your your take, your philosophy of cryptos and you know privacy coins versus oh. non privacy coins, and the fact that Bitcoin is traceable, okay. Ethereum is traceable. What 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 are your feelings on that from a okay okay from a personal standpoint? I think standpoint? if we take, I, I understand. So I think from, if we take every blockchain as a person, personnel, and uh, I think Monero's personnel is the most close one to Bitcoin, unlike Ethereum and Cardano and other blockchains. Mm -hmm. So we were like very into Bitcoin community. And I think from that point of view, you can also feel that we, we are very much aligned with the uh, mentality of Monero. And uh, also, by the way, I was reading Mastering Monero yesterday. Yeah, I, I didn't that. read <laughs> Mastering Ethereum. I read Mastering Bitcoin. I didn't read Mastering Ethereum, but I was okay. reading, I was reading uh, Mastering Monero yesterday. Because, okay. And also, I found that the, the ring signature, everything is super cool. Ring signature, uh, confidential transactions, these things, these schemes are super cool to protect mm -hmm. the, uh, the privacy. 
And also, you know that in the Ethereum community, there are some smart contract protocols like Tornado, which is working for privacy purposes. And also um, in Bitcoin community, I was more familiar with Bitcoin community. They have a wallet called the Wasabi Wallet. Uh, they do CoinJoin. And the Wasabi Wallet was closed months, months ago because of the pressure from the government, I believe. So I think Monero is almost the only choice or one of the several only choices for people to protect their privacy. So in the long run, I'm really bullish about Monero um, because I, I think uh, privacy is one of the key things, one of the key human rights that we should protect. So that's my perspective for All Monero. Right. And then finally, awesome. we're going to support Monero. Awesome, man. Uh, we, obviously, I think everybody loves what you're saying right now. Uh, we, looks like we'll, we'll be yeah. getting a, a new hardware wallet soon. F f and uh, it's it's being uh, brought about by somebody who actually <laughs> believes in these ideals. So that's, that's exciting. That's exciting to see. Uh, exciting that you're saying it's only potentially a couple of months away. Would love to get yeah. you... Uh, somehow get you you guys down to Monerotopia, you or somebody on behalf of Keystone would love to have you guys at the conference in November in Mexico City. It's also would be a great way for you to interface with the community. A lot of the devs will be there. Um, it would be amazing to have you. It might be something you, you want to do. Yeah, okay. I will think about it. the because my wife is sick. So actually, uh, there are a lot of oh, conferences okay. happening from last year or sick. So I didn't, I didn't go to any conferences. But okay, yeah, no, no, no pressure. Be better. Yeah, yeah, th throwing it okay. out there as an Thank opportunity you. or somebody on Keystone's behalf would just be a good way to uh, network in person and to cool. also learn a lot about Monero because. Uh, you know, what we have yeah. like Luke Parker will be there. He's the one that's, I'm sure you've heard of Luke Parker. He's the one that's oh. developing full chain membership proofs for Monero uh, and a lot, a lot mm. of other devs. So like Matt, thank cool. you so much. Tux, you got it. You got anything uh, that I missed? Anything vital that we should, should um, be asking here? I definitely have, have a couple questions. Uh, I mean, first, this is a really, Please. it's a really cool looking hardware wallet and it's definitely a unique one because this isn't, it's, it works very differently from Ledger and, Trezor, and I like that you guys are using like the live QR code to do a gapless wallet. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Cause I see a lot of people do that between phones. Uh, but this of course is a dedicated hardware wallet. Yeah. Uh, but I do have a question related to the yeah. firmware. So it looks like most of the firmware is all open source. And this is something that's historically been questionable on some other hardware wallet devices. Uh, how, how does this mm -hmm. extend to the secure elements? Do the secure elements run like open source firmware that you guys actually work on also, or is it? No. No, no. Uh, the, the secure element only store your private key. You only do the storing, which means that also from our firmware, this firmware is running on the MCU. So from the firmware, you can see that it, it like get to the recovery phase or get the private key from the secure element from the three different secure element and assemble that in the MCU and do all the algorithm, do the cryptographic algorithm and do the other uh, support for those blockchain features. So in this way, we just like I said, we find the balance that because if you don't have a secure element and um, a hacker get your device, they can easily get into your device to get your cover phrase, just like brick uh, Trezor. But if you have a secure element, then the problem is about open source. So we find a balance that if you only use secure element to do the storing of your recovery phase or the storing of your private key, and then you can open source all the other logics on the MCU, then people see what you are doing with the recovery phase and uh, everything, how everything's running under the hood. So that's our oh, I see, that makes of, a lot of sense. You're that's our like transparency. Yeah, you're moving stuff yeah. in the space where you can actually control the, the code. Uh, which yeah. that makes that makes sense. Yeah, I, like actually, yeah, actually, th this is not invented by us. This is invented by CodeCard, and CodeCard has been in the Bitcoin community for years, uh, and this scheme has been battle tested. So I think this is the best way of building a hardware wallet, rather than um, Ledger is not the best way, Trezor is not the best way, uh, but this is the best way of building a hardware wallet. And right now. Uh, since code card and then Keystone and another Bitcoin hardware wallet called Passport, all of us were using the same scheme. Just use the requirement to do the storing. 
Very cool. How about, how about foundation tux? Is that similar too? Yeah. Passport yeah. is from foundation. Passport is the name Passport of their product. Is foundation yes. is the, the company okay. or the team. Yeah. And they got do, it, they it, do the it. gapless live QR code, uh, style also. Hmm. Yeah, actually we did the QR code, the first one, and then they use the same QR code protocol and then ah. passport is compatible with all the others. So we're the very first one in the, so you guys started the Bitcoin standard. community to do the QR. Yeah, we started a standard, uh, together, together with another team called the blockchain commons. Blockchain commons was running by, uh, an old guy called, uh, Christopher Allen, who's one of the earliest cryptographic heroes in the community. He's in his sixties or seventies. He has a nonprofit uh, team called blockchain commons. You can search that on, on GitHub and we set up the QR code standard together with them. Oh, very cool. That is awesome. Thank you. And I guess one last question I had, um, I was just looking at the, uh, the product page here. Um, and this is related mm -hmm. to the person who's asking about the EL, EAL five plus certification. This yeah. one mentions yeah. that it's PCI and I'm not familiar with the like compliance requirements of the PCI security levels compared to EAL. So, and it doesn't say which, uh, one this is a different, yeah, th this is like a different, uh, schemes of, uh, just here, you have everything assurance level. These are different schemes. So I think the suggestion is that you can dive into, because we disclosed the type of the secure element. So we didn't want to use this kind of names of different standards that like EAL or PCI to confuse people. But I think the best way is dive into those secure elements because we disclose the, the types of those secure elements. That's the best way to investigate the, like if those secure elements are legit or it's not qualified. I see. Uh, but yeah, um, it is, it is interesting that you guys use three secure elements. That's definitely a, that's definitely a unique thing. Yep. Yep. That yeah, looks like a pretty awesome product overall. Um, I'm excited to, uh, see Minerva be supported on it and I'm excited to work with you guys on integrating it with cake wallet. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tax. All right. Awesome, man. That was fantastic. And uh, th thanks for jumping on in su such short notice. Greatly appreciate that and making the time to join us. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. You Thank you, Lixon. A anything else you want to put out there before we uh, move on? Any any other info or anything you want to throw out there? Yeah, I think if you guys want to follow uh, the latest news about our support for Monero, you can follow our Twitter handle on X, which is Keystone Wallet, and you can find, and we will keep you updated. Uh, for example, we started working with uh, Cake. We have started the coding. We have started the, the UI UX design, things like that. We'll keep you updated. Lixon, thank you so much. We're, we're very excited. Um, thank you. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. you, man. We'll, thank you for we'll having me. We'll be in me. touch. We'll be thank in you. touch. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. we get you down to Mexico. All right. Thank you.